Hi everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. In a recent video, I discussed edges and why they're essential for you to master. I'm taking it to the next level with turns in this video. Turning is a fundamental skill in ice skating, whether you're a figure skater or a hockey skater. Turning creates a dynamic beyond the basic skills of simply skating forward and backward. Steps and turns make up some of the components of skating skills and are essential foundational skills used at every development level. I'll introduce the basic concepts you need to learn and identify different turns. I'll cover the importance of edge quality as you create and exit your turns. Your body alignment, that's where to put your weight on the blade, as well as rhythm and timing. Common errors and ways you can correct them. Whether your skating discipline is singles, pairs, synchro, ice dance, testing your moves, or skating skills, the quality of your turns and steps are essential. The judges evaluate your turns by the entrance and exit edges. That's important, so let me repeat it. Judges are evaluating your turns by their entrance and exit edges. They're asking if the entry curve is steady. Were there any wobbles or sub curves or flats on the exit? Did you hit your toe pick? Toe pick. Toe pick. Toe pick. Toe pick. <laughs> was there a scrape or a skid in or out of the turn? If you missed my video about edges, there's a link to that in the description down below. After watching this video, you should definitely watch that video too. It will help you understand edges better. You need the ability to create edges to turn. If your edges are weak, your turns cannot be high quality. Knowledge of turning methods can help you analyze the basic turns for skating skills. This will also contribute to your understanding of the concepts of spinning and jumping. Jumping. Let's first talk about the difference between a spin and a turn. This is something I always ask my skaters when I'm introducing turns. What do you think the difference is? Take a little time to think about it. In a spin, you continue to rotate, creating a circular pattern with your blade on the ice. With a turn, you're only rotating halfway around creating patterns that look more like this. So how do you create a turn then? You need to have rotation or the twist of the shoulders against your hips. This creates the entry edge into the turn. Here, your shoulders rotate while your hips remain stationary, square to the trace. The shoulders against hip technique creates potential energy and pressure. To create the turn, the shoulders reverse, releasing the hips and the pressure on the ice. In addition to the shoulders against hips, there are other techniques that you can use. Technique number two, midsection of the body. The midsection of your body projects in the direction of travel. This forces your weight either further forward or back on the blade, causing rotation. Technique number three, big toe, little toe. This is similar to midsection of the body. It's achieved by pressing on the blade's appropriate back or front portion and on the appropriate entrance edge. Technique number four, Free leg action. The free leg can assist in rotation. Action can be initiated by bringing the free leg in at the point of the turn. This is useful for three turns and counters. Technique number five, shifting lean while turning. In turns that involve changing curves or circles, such as counters, rockers, and Choctaws, shifting the lean from one circle to the next creates the rotation. Although these turns are more challenging than others, they form some of the basic movements on the ice. Types of turns. There are several ways to group turns. Some coaches do this by turns that are on one foot and two feet. I'm not talking about your basic two foot turn here. One foot turns are performed on one foot. Two foot turns are performed while changing feet. They're also called steps. One foot turns include three turns, bracket, loop, Two foot turns include mohawks and chalk paws. Other coaches place turns into categories according to the edge. Three turns and brackets are change of edge turns. With these turns, you must be able to feel in your ankle the precise time where the turn changes over to the new edge. Some turns do not change edge. These are counters and rockers. These turns require you to have a strong body position on the entry and maintain the clean and accurate edge in and out of the turn by curves or rotations. Three turns, brackets, loops, and mohawks. The entry and exit edges are on the same circle or arc. Circle rotation is the same before and after the turn. 
than counters, rockers, twizzles, and Choctaws. Entry edges are on different but equal curves. The circle or rotation changes during the action phase of the turn. There are two directions that turns rotate clockwise to the right and counterclockwise to the left. To determine the direction a turn rotates, you want to look at the direction the body rotates on the entry edge. Don't be misled by the direction you're moving into the turn. For example, a right forward inside bracket. You're moving counterclockwise, but your body rotates clockwise on the entry edge. This also occurs with counter rotated turns like rockers. This can be a real tricky thing. It can take a while to get used to. Unless you're developing a level four step sequence, it's not crucial. Still, it's never too early to learn. In addition to rotating, there's another term that every skater should be familiar with when learning turns. Checking. This is the stopping or slowing down of rotation with control of the exit edge. The definition of a check is movement of the entire body to finish the turn in a controlled manner. At the top, or what we call the apex or cusp of the turn, you perform a reverse action of the shoulders against your hips to stop or control the rotation and to create an exit edge. How is turning quality evaluated? Using your blade correctly is critical when looking for quality turns. You really need to understand each part of the blade and the purpose of each so that you know what to use each for. This will help you develop an awareness of where you need to be on your blade for each skill. Once you have that awareness, it will become more natural for you. I promise you will get to a point where you don't even have to think about it. If you're unaware of where you are and where you should be on your blade so that you're using it correctly, you'll often get scrapes and skids and sub curves. All the things that will prevent you from passing a moves or a skating skills test or having those turns recognized by a technical specialist in a step sequence. The earlier you understand how to use the blade correctly, the better your quality will be. So I try and introduce my skaters to this at the earliest stages. When skating forward, the skater is on the middle back of the blade. When skating backward, the weight is on the middle front of the blade. To do a forward turn, the skater must rock up to the ball of their foot. So there is less blade and friction to rise up and over the turn. When doing a backward turn, the skater is in the middle front of the blade and then needs to rock to the back of the blade to feel the rise up and over the turn. This will decrease the possibility of that horrible scraping sound that can happen during a turn when there is too much blade in contact with the ice. We all know that sound. The rocking action in a turn reduces the friction of the blade on the ice. It puts you in control to balance balance on the correct part of the blade for the exit of the turn. The rocking action occurs at the shoulders of the turn, the point at which the blade changes from one edge to another where the blade leaves the primary circle. It's called the cusp or apex of the turn. In a good quality turn, there's a fluid rhythmic rise and fall of your skating knee and ankle. Turns should also have continuous flow with equal speed in and out of them. You must have a controlled upper body rotation to achieve good entrance and exit edges. Be mindful of the three Bs, body alignment, balance over the blade, and body lean. Now, let's go over each turn. Three turn. This is the simplest and most basic turn. It's often the first turn that you will learn on one foot. A three turn stays on one foot on the same circle, but changes both direction and edge. The change of edge is at the cusp or apex of the entry edge. It does not occur on the entry edge into the turn itself, nor on the exit edge. During a three turn, the direction of the blade is towards the center of the circle. There are eight different kinds of three turns. Right forward outside, left forward outside, right forward inside, left forward inside. Right backward outside, right backward inside, left backward outside, left backward inside. Those edges and those feet apply to every turn as well. Just like jumps, every turn has a beginning, middle, and end. The beginning is your preparation, where you enter on the correct edge. The middle is where the turn occurs. The end is your exit, where a strong check allows you to come out of the turn. You want to be on an edge when going into your turn. You want to hold that edge. Sometimes beginner skaters will whip into their turn using 
their arms really to do it. That's not what you want. You wanna sustain the edge and then turn at the correct point. Outside and inside mohawks. A mohawk is accomplished using both feet. So mohawks are considered steps, not turns. A mohawk stays on the same circle, stays on the same edge, but changes feet and direction. Mohawks can be inside to inside, staying to the inside of a curve or a lobe while changing feet or outside to outside, staying to the outside of a curve or lobe while changing feet. Mohawks can be forward to backward or backward to forward. Mohawks are used widely in transitions within your programs. They need to be executed effortlessly so it does not slow you down or impact your flow. Stepping on a clean edge backward or forward is critical to the quality of your mohawks. You'll sometimes hear us coaches call this neat feet. Skaters often jump their mohawks, but remember, this is a step, not a jump. Try to step, not jump. Keep your feet neat. There's another concept to mohawks that is important to note, whether it's closed or open. It is the placement of the free foot in relation to the skating foot that dictates whether it's an open or closed mohawk. In an open mohawk, the heel of the free foot is placed to the instep of the skating foot. The free foot ends up in an open position behind the skating foot. In a closed mohawk, the free foot instep is placed behind the heel of the skating foot, which in turn has the free leg in a front or closed position. Brackets. A bracket turn stays on one foot and on the same circle, but it changes both direction and edge. This is a counter rotated turn, meaning the entry edge is rotated when you're facing outside the circle. The change of edge is at the cusp or apex of the entry edge. It does not occur on the entry edge into the turn itself, nor on the exit edge itself. Brackets can be forward to backward or backward to forward. It takes a lot of control and stability to execute a bracket. You're maintaining a true edge all the way up to that apex, turning at the top with a change of edge and exiting with the control, maintaining the shape of the turn and the curve of the exit lobe. Brackets are considered a difficult turn in IJS scoring, so they will count in a step sequence. A common error with brackets is a straight exit out of the bracket. Often that's caused by a skater with a free leg extension and an exit straight out. The technical panel would not award a bracket when that happens in an IJS step sequence. That can be a really costly mistake, especially when the bracket is part of your cluster because you've lost the cluster as well. Rockers. A rocker is a turn on one foot that stays on the same edge. It changes direction and circle. The change of direction is at the cusp or apex of the entry edge. It does not occur on the entry edge into the turn itself, nor on the exit edge itself. The rocker entry resembles a three turn and exits look like a bracket. Rockers require quick action during the turn, which is accomplished with the entry rotation, free foot movement, and a strong check on the exit. Rockers can be forward to backward, backward to forward, Rockers are also considered a difficult turn in IJS scoring. Suppose you have difficulty on the exit. In that case, I would return you to the bracket exit. Reinforce what you already know. Sometimes there can be a disconnect from bringing an accomplished skill into a new skill. It's up to us coaches to help make that connection. Once you're able to connect the dots, you'll often improve. Remember, rockers turn into the circle like a three turn and exit into the new lobe like a bracket. Counters. In my opinion, counters are the most challenging of all the turns. A counter is a turn that stays on one foot, stays on the same edge, changes direction, and changes circle. The direction change is at the entry edge's cusp or apex. It does not occur on the entry edge into the turn itself, nor on the exit edge itself. The counter entry resembles a bracket and the exit can look more like a three turn. Counters can be forward to backward or backward to forward. It's crucial to have a strong bracket technique to successfully develop counters. Every counter is prepared like a bracket, turning outside, facing outside the circle without changing the edge and exiting by creating a new lobe. You're ready to learn counters when you've developed excellent blade usage on your brackets. Common errors would be the change of edge before the turn, which 
turns the counter into a three turn or not turning or turning too late into the next lobe. Remember, a counter enters like a bracket and exits like a three turn. Sometimes it can be tricky to understand the difference between a rocker and a counter, especially when they're performed quickly. When there's confusion, just go back to the definition of the word counter. It means away from or against. Your body on a counter will always be facing outside the circle. The more the turn varies from its axis, the more errors may occur. Twizzles. A twizzle is a series of traveling unchecked three turns on one foot that are rotated with a continuous and uninterrupted action. Twizzles are turns that stay on the same skating foot and have multiple changes of direction and edges, but run on the same circle. A high quality twizzle travels one blade length or less between the cusps of the turn. At the beginning developing levels, it may be closer to two blade lengths though. I often think of a twizzle as a hybrid between a spin and a three turn. To the untrained eye, a twizzle may appear to be a traveling spin, But a twizzle is actually a series of three turns on the same foot without a check or any pushes between them. Twizzles are all about balance. Your free leg needs to be still and your weight must be stable. You must be able to turn without the free leg moving. That's challenging. Twizzles are considered difficult turns in IJS. I start my skaters out with developing twizzles as soon as they have learned backward three turns. Once they have those, I have them do double threes, which are a forward three turn immediately followed by a backward three turn without any pushes or touchdowns of their free foot between the two turns. Then I gradually increase the timing until they reach the correct twizzle timing with continuous movement without any checks between the turns. This can be challenging for a lot of skaters. So I try to introduce it as early as I can. Sometimes with some skaters, I don't even tell them they're learning a twizzle. Some skaters get really freaked out by even hearing the word twizzle. Here's a fun fact. Twizzles weren't even a thing until 1990. That's right. We didn't even have twizzles until 1990. That makes me feel super old, by the way. Loops. A loop is a turn that stays on the same foot, same circle, stays on the same edge, and remains in the same direction. They must be exited out on one foot. A teardrop shaped print is formed within a small circle that is close to the height of the skater in size. In figures, a loop will be approximately one blade length wide and one half blade length long. When skating a loop in free skate blades, as most of us do these days, it may be slightly larger and wider, especially when skated with speed. When entering a loop, you rotate your upper body like you're entering a three turn. The skating blade remains in the same direction throughout the loop. To create the exit edge, there's a counter rotation of the shoulders. Think of forming a circle within a circle when performing a loop. The most common error is that your body weight is not balanced on the skating side. Loops are only forward or backward. The body weight error applies to both forward and backward loops. So pay attention to where your weight is. The weight changes at the top of the loop. That's another common error that causes the exit edge to be incorrect. The movement of your free leg passing from front to back or back to front may cause some errors as well. An exercise that I'll use to help my skaters feel the balance on the skating side throughout the entire loop is to have them lightly touch their free foot down around the top of the loop and then pick it up. Just don't do that for too long. You don't want that to become a habit. As soon as you've mastered staying entirely on the skating side with no movement, you're ready to perform it on one foot. When the technical panel is viewing your loop from across the ice and cannot see the print as they could in the old days when the judges were evaluating figures. The tech panel is watching your free leg, particularly on a backward loop. If your free foot movement is correct, it's likely that the tech panel will call it as a valid loop. Work on the visual of your correct free foot movement. That will give the technical panel a good impression and assist you in executing the loop properly. Choctaws. Like a mohawk, a Choctaw is accomplished using both feet. It's considered a step. A Choctaw changes feet, edges, direction, and curve. Choctaws can be inside to outside or outside to inside. Changing circles while changing direction, while changing feet. It's the only step that is considered difficult in IJS scoring. 
It must have a clean edge and a correct step down to the next edge. Choctaws are often not executed well enough in a step sequence to be awarded. So like Twizzles, developing them early on is worthwhile. That way it's a solid step for you when you need it. Like the Mohawk, Choctaws can be open or closed. The placement of the free foot in relation to the skating foot dictates whether it's an open or closed Choctaw. In an open Choctaw, the heel of your free foot is placed to the instep of the skating foot. At the exit, the free foot is back in an open position. In a closed Choctaw, your free foot is placed behind the skating foot and the free foot will be in front in a closed position. Choctaw lobes must be equal in curvature. Most skaters learn the first Choctaw in preliminary moves or skating skills, the alternating three turns on the short axis. That includes a Choctaw for the step into the new turn. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you took your preliminary moves or skating skills test and knew that you were performing a Choctaw. I find that most skaters are challenged with the exit edge. Often they'll have a good entry edge and a straight exit edge. When that happens, the technical panel would not recognize your Choctaw in a step sequence. And that can cost you a level. An exercise that can help you develop Choctaw timing. Skate on two feet, rotating into the lobe, turning on two feet and checking, coming out of the lobe all the way. I have my skaters skate this down the length of the ice, keeping the lobe small using deep knee bend and pressing their ankles into both edges. Your arm should twist into the check and remain level without lifting your arms up and twisting to check out. You can also tie it to the corresponding bracket, counter, or rocker that fits whatever Choctaw you may be working on. Turns are created by rotation using the rock of your blade and the edge. These are the fundamental skating skills that are used in all disciplines. I hope this video has provided you with some essential tools on which you can help develop your techniques for turns. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and Share it with someone else that you think it could help. Just post it to your social media too. I post videos every week that can help you with your figure skating, your fitness, nutrition, and ultimately it'll help you live your best life. So remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. This is Amy, happy skating. I will see you real soon. Thank you for watching, bye.